Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you had a bit of fun coming out with your initial designs for your rubber band cars. Now we're entering the next part of our design process, building. There are two really big questions that we need to ask. So first, what are our cars going to be made out of? And second, how are we going to attach all of those parts together? You might need to have a bit of a hunt around the house to find suitable materials for your cars. Uh, think about the different properties that all of the parts need to have to work. Let's start with the body. The body of the car needs to be strong enough that it can hold all of the other bits together and maybe even survive a crash or two. Here are some materials that I've got that might make a suitable body. We might be able to do it out of an old bottle or a cardboard box or some pop sticks that we can stick together. At this point, you might need the help of an adult if you're going to be cutting and gluing things. Remember that cutting tools can be dangerous if you're not handling them correctly. I'll show you a couple of quick tricks that I like to use when I'm cutting something, but remember that if you're ever unsure, you can always ask an adult to come help you out or show you how to do it. First and most important, I'm never going to cut towards my own body parts. I'm going to move my hand so that when I'm holding this, I don't have to worry about cutting myself. And when I'm using the scissors, I make sure that my fingers are never in the path of the blades. The other thing is that I'm going to make sure that the end of my blades match up with my lines so that I don't overcut. If I'm using a bladed knife, like this box cutter, I actually want to be standing up and cutting over a surface that's made for it, like this cutting mat. This is so I can use my own body weight to help me cut, instead of forcing down with all the muscles in my hand. I'm going to use one hand to hold onto my workpiece, and I'm going to use the other hand to hold onto the knife like this, with my index finger pressing down just behind the blade. If I press too hard when I'm trying to cut, I might accidentally slip and cut myself. So what I'm going to do is use my body weight to gently cut along here. This cut hasn't made it all the way through, but that's okay because I can just go over it again and again until I get all the way through to the other side. You'll notice also that whenever I'm finished using my blade, even for a moment, I always put it back into its holder. This really drops the chance of accidentally cutting ourselves or others. I'm gonna be using some hot glue to stick my car's body together. But if you don't have hot glue, you might use something like tape or blue tack to do the same job. There are a couple of rules when we're using our hot glue gun. The first thing is to make sure that we always have a responsible adult on hand. The second is that I have to make sure there's always a spot for me to safely put down my glue gun when I'm not working with it. Remember that even when you turn your glue gun off, it's going to stay hot for a little while after. And we wanna be careful so that we don't burn ourselves. If you do burn yourself, the first thing you should do is carefully put down your glue gun and then go run that burned area under some cold water for around about 10 minutes. Quite often when you're gluing things, less is more, which means that I don't want to use heaps of glue or I might get it everywhere and I increase the risk of accidentally burning myself. If I need to smear some glue around, I'm not going to use my finger. Instead, I'll use a piece of scrap cardboard, like this one here, so that I can spread it a little bit without any risk of burning myself. Now that we've done our body, I think it's time for us to start working on our wheels. What shape makes the best wheels? Do you have anything lying around that might make for good wheels? 
I've got these milk bottle caps here that I think might make some pretty good wheels. But if you don't have these, you could make some wheels yourself, maybe out of some cardboard. I'm going to use this coffee mug to make some circles. All I need is something round, and this looks like a pretty good size for me. To make sure that I don't waste any of my material, I'm going to put it right as close to the edge before I circle around it, and then I'm going to put all of my circles as close together as I can get them. Then when I cut them out, sometimes I like to, instead of trying to cut them out in the piece, I might like to cut a small section out so that it's easier for me to work with. Now that we've got our wheels, we need to think about how we're going to attach them to the body of our car. If this is my milk bottle wheel and I just stick this straight onto our car, I have a bit of a problem. My wheel can't spin anywhere. I'm going to need something else to attach this to. And that is where our axle comes into play. For this axle, I've just taken a big skewer, cut a small piece off, and then stuck it in a T-shape with some hot glue. This one's gonna need to be really strong to make sure it holds on and doesn't fall apart when our car is working. Now I'm gonna need to make some holes in my milk bottle caps. If you're using cardboard, this can be really easy. You could just poke a skewer like this metal one straight through, making sure that your hand's not on the other side. With our milk bottle caps, it's best to get an adult to help you out with this one. You might need to use something like scissors or something else that's really sharp to be able to pierce through. I'm going to make a small circle here with my scissors, pushing very gently. As soon as it goes through, I know I've gone far enough. And there's a small hole that I can now stick this onto my axle. Now my axle can spin around and move the wheels with it. If your wheels are feeling really loose, you can always add just a little bit of blue tack to help them hold on a little bit, just as I've done here. Now we have another problem. How are we going to attach our wheel and axles to the body of our car? If you're using something like a cardboard box, this can be as simple as just punching some holes in the side and sticking it straight through. But if we're attaching it to something made out of pop sticks or a different type of frame, this can be a little bit trickier. If I just glue my axle directly onto my body, I have the same problem as before. It's not going to be able to spin, and that means that our wheels aren't going to be able to move. I need to come up with something else. I'm going to need a sleeve for our axle to sit in. I've got these two bits of straw that I've cut up. I'm just going to take my wheels off my axle and I'm going to put this straw over the top. Now, if we glue these sleeves onto our body, our axle can still spin freely. I'm just gonna give it a quick test with my wheels on as well. If we test really quickly, we can make sure that this plan is going to work. Now when I spin it, holding onto the sleeve, our wheels still spin really well. So now I need to glue these onto this. But I've just noticed another problem. If I glue this right on top here, I've got a piece of pop stick blocking the way. I might need to make a slight change to what my design looked like. I'm going to mark out a spot in the middle, and then I'm going to cut that up. I'm going to go over it a lot of times. This is what we call the score and snap method. Notice when I'm cutting with this one, I'm never cutting directly towards my body, I'm always cutting across. 
it's hard to get through this all in one go. So by going over and over again, our cut gets deeper and deeper. Until when I'm far enough through, it's very easy for me to snap. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now I just need to snap it off and that comes right out. Now let's see how they match up. If I put my wheel and axle back in there, if I just hold it together before I glue it up, it can spin freely now, which is really important for our car. Right, now it's time for me to glue my axle and sleeves onto my car's body. I'm just going to put a bit of hot glue down on both sides and I'm going to line it up so that it looks like it's straight and then I'm just going to press down. Now I have to make sure that I don't get any hot glue on my fingers. I don't want to burn myself by accident. You could always ask for help and get someone else to hold on to this for you while it's drying. Now that feels like it's dry. I'm just going to test out my wheels to make sure that they still spin. I think we're looking pretty good. Now I got to do the same for the front wheels. I've got two more milk bottle caps and I've got this really long skewer. I think it might actually be a bit too long so I'm just going to mark this. I think that will be long enough and then using that same score and snap method I'm going to chop this one up. It'd be really hard to chop this through in one go so instead I'm just going to press lightly with my scissors and I'm going to roll the skewer around. This doesn't chop it all the way through but it does leave a really big groove in the middle there. I put my thumbs on either side and then when I press it snaps where that groove is and I've got a really nice clean cut. Now I have another straw, I have to make sure that it fits the same size as my skewer. So I'm going to chop it off about here. Let's just give it a quick test before we glue anything on. I'll put this on here. I'll add my wheels and I'll make sure that they can spin. These small tests really stop us from failing too hard later on. Now I think that's pretty good. It's time for me to attach this onto my car. Once again, I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue. I'm just going to use a piece of scrap material to clean that up a little bit there. And then we push down with our wheel and axle. That's looking pretty good. I'll just do a quick test to make sure that that still spins and that my back wheels still spin. All right, there's only one thing that I'm missing and that is my rubber band to power it. I need to have some place on this car that I can hook my rubber band so that it doesn't come off. I might use another piece of that skewer that I chopped up earlier. It doesn't need to be very long, so I'm just going to make it around about an inch. Using my scissors again, I'm going to score and then snap. And for this bit, I'm going to need quite a bit of hot glue. I'm going to attach this just in the middle here where my frame meets up, sticking up and out. I'll pump the hot glue gun a couple of times, and then I'm just going to attach this so that my rubber band can hook onto it. It might take a little while for this one to dry. All right, let's just give it a quick test. I'm going to press down and I'm going to move it and my wheels all spin, my axle is spinning. I think it's time to add the rubber band. All I'm going to do is hook it over that bit we just added and I'm going to bring it back so that it goes onto the other side of our axle and then I'm just going to wind this up. As I wind, it stretches the rubber band out and what should happen when I let go? You ready? Three, two, one. And our wheels spin really nicely. 
Okay, now you've seen me build a car, it's time for you to do the same thing. Come and see me again in the next video once you've finished building your car, when we're ready to test it out.